Today we have a haul. I have several hundred of the same items that I paid a quarter a piece for, and I'm going to show you the insane major values that some of these can sell for. Hey, it's Don. I have a haul for you. It's all the same item. I picked up a whole bunch of advertising, mostly mechanical pencils, but there's some pens and things like that mixed in here as well. I have over 200 of these. I paid a quarter a piece for these. People collect these. They'll pick them up when they travel and all kinds of things. I've got a few that I wanted to show out to you here. There's a ton of money in these things. At a quarter a piece, probably the lowest I will sell any one of these for is around $20. Multiply that times 200 and you'll see the major profit in these. I'm going to make several thousand dollars off of these. And I know I'll get people saying they'll be long haul items. You would be surprised at how quickly mechanical pencils with advertising on them will sell. Especially the odd bizarre ones. Things that are collected in other fields will be collected in pens because this sort of advertisement are disposable. So most people discarded these items and they don't hold on to them. So here's a close up of some of the pens and pencils I have. Um, we'll show you some individual ones in just a second here but this is what i look for this stuff makes you a lot of money and most people don't mess with it this is something that would have been disposable back in the day you would have been given this or picked this up for an advertising piece and you would have just disposed of it once the ink or lead was gone that's not the case with many people back in the day because they understand the value in something like this so let me slide these back out of the way here Let's show you some individual ones. Now, there's ones that do action. These usually do very well. This is for okay used cars. Company doesn't exist. It was fairly big in, say, the 50s. Um, the brand names even on these, Everlast. It's a name brand. I mean, the brands that made these are uh, well-known, fine quality. These things hold up. They're still fully usable. Every one of these with um, maybe a little effort to some of them. Sometimes they lock up, but um, I'm a pencil person. There were many other items at the, the same place I got these at. I mean, a ton of other stuff I could have bought. I centered in on these pencils. I didn't care what else was there. Um, you know, I like certain things. As an artist, I have a lot of pencils. I love pencils. I love the designs, the different kinds and constructions. I actually have a collection of uh, early drafting pencils that I actually still use for my own artwork. So anyway, let's look at a few more of these here and show you some of the interesting ones in here. Now, here's a good example right here, um, automotive one. Most of the automotive ones do very well. This is early. This is like 1930s. This is something that I'm probably going to put $34.50 to, say, $57.50 when I list it. Again, my honest, sincere uh, opinion on what I will get will be about $20 plus for every single one of these, all the way up to, say, $75 or $80 bucks for a few of the ones that are in here. There's a lot of interesting topics. Um, here's uh, Oil Company. So motor oil, this is Lion, this is something you won't find. Some of these date back to the 30s. I even have a couple out of this collection that date back into the 1920s. These are just excellent pieces. Now, I haven't tested every single one of these. Yeah, this one probably needs a little bit of cleaning, but these can be repaired. In fact, it does still turn. Yeah, I should be able to use these still. Most of these take standardized lead. For those in Patreon, I am going to show you an insider uh, area on this type of thing. Uh, I'll give you uh, some big bonuses here um, while we're talking about it. So it'll be a companion video for those in Patreon. Uh, but anyway, let's show you a few more. Dr. Pepper. Now there's some other ones in here. The wife pulled out a Pepsi one that she's keeping and some other ones like that. Now I've got a quarter into these and I've got a few hundred that I picked up here. I picked through a big bunch. I left over half of them there that didn't have either good advertising or even any advertising. I picked up every one that should sell for a decent value. I probably left a few that were worth a few bucks. But, you know, I picked up so many. This is a lot of time into it. We're going to make a lot of money too. Return on my investment on this many. I'm going to estimate 2500 or better in all honesty. 
So in a quarter a piece times 200, you can figure out how much I have into these. So uh, let's show you a couple more. International Harvester. Um, there's tractor ones in here and all this sort of thing. These are all extremely scarce these days. Uh, it's got some nice good information. The lead's still in there. Uh, it might need to be clean. Usually there'll be an eraser in the back just like this. If you've seen enough of these like I have, you can kind of age and uh, determine how old they are as well. The construction gives that away, just FYI. Now here's a real interesting one here. Automotive, the premier automotive company, Cleveland, Ohio. This is an earlier one, probably 40s, maybe even up back into the 30s possibly. Uh, that I am almost sure is Bakelite. Just a real nice, fine example of this. Again, none of the ones I'm showing you now, I'm going to put less than $34.50 on it. You may see other people putting them up cheap, but I don't try to kill the market and stuff myself. Everybody keeps them up at a reasonable price. We all uh, make out like a bandit. I'm not one to race to the bottom, and I'm not going to blow these out for a couple bucks a piece. It'll only take me selling one or two to get all of my money back. And again, I've got hundreds of these now for that same initial purchase. So quarter a piece. There's another real nice one here. Now, there's some really nice local ones from my town. Quite a few of them, and I know those will sell because I have always been able to sell those. Let's see. Yep, eraser back there. This one feels like it's plastic. Um, it's a larger size. This is probably late 40s, early 50s. Uh, this is a Pioneer. Uh, they do tractors and things. So some of you probably will recognize some of these names. These types of things go across many different categories. That's another key to this. Now, this is an early ballpoint pen, it looks like. Um, again, any of this stuff is advertised in Mopar, Auto Parts. Come on, you got to know that name. It's got a specific it's from Nashville as well. So a Nashville collector, a car collector, a pen collector, an advertising collector, a Mopar collector, um, or even the last name here, the company uh, last name, Parnell. I sell things all the time. Almost every day I sell something because of the last name in the item. Now this one has again has International Harvester. This is an earlier one, probably 1940s. Um, other tractor companies, Power Equipment Company, um, looks like Knoxville on this one and Nashville. This is an earlier one and it still works already. If you look very closely there you can see the lead going in and out or at least the push rod for it. These can be repaired and cleaned up if you want, uh, eraser-wise, and the whole works can be replaced. There are some that will fit in these. It's a Schaefer, too, so most of these are name brand. Again, these back in the day were giveaways to some extent, so let's just show you some more. This is a weirder style button. Um, this one will probably need some work. My guess is the spring is jammed up there, um, but they're all like standardized pens. You can actually replace the ink in these and still getting them working. And this is a GE Electronics uh, radios and stuff. Uh, Jackson, Tennessee. Rather interesting one here. Again, this one's probably like a $57 price on this one. Uh, most of these are $34 or $50 or better. This one's got Pegasus on it. Um, let's see here. Phone number wise, I could track that down to the city as well. Uh, as you can see, these phone numbers are, are very easy to track down. So just FYI, at least in my experience, again, 3450 or so. This is probably 40s or so. You can tell by the phone number on how old these are too. Let's just show you a few more here. Mid-Tennessee Electric Company. This is a very nice one here. It's got some more information on it as well. Uh, another name brand. All of these are excellent in my book. I love, love pencils. So I left everything else at the sale. I was happy to walk away with a couple hundred of these sorts of things at a quarter piece. Again, we're talking thousands of bucks profit. I didn't have to fight. There was nobody else looking at these. Nobody. I had the free run of this. Uh, again, there's a little bit to this more. So uh, for those in Patreon, you got another video coming out today talking about insider info on these right now to tie up to this. Another name brand here as well, Purina. Now Purina, this one isn't a super high dollar one. Most people just put like 10 or 15 bucks on it and just blow these out. I'll put 27.50 or 34.50 on this either way and I bet you a million bucks I'll still get it. Something like this too, I'll probably get it working because it is a pencil. I'll put some new lead in it and maybe a new eraser. I buy boxes of erasers too because again, I use them for art. So it's nothing to me to replace a eraser like a penny. 
and the lead in here another penny so for that you can have a working example for most of these here's another good one napa this is from their uh napa memphis warehouse rather interesting one here as well too Let's see if it's got an eraser on there yeah most of the time if i can get the back part off here uh i'll take a chance on the the uh, pencil or pen i don't care which uh here's another lion lion oil this kind of thing lion oil hasn't existed in a while the phone number is 3405 that is the whole phone number so you can pretty much date this one as well really nice example here in all honesty what do we got here westinghouse here's a real nice westinghouse uh, by the color scheme, I'm going to say late 30s into the 40s. Uh, yeah, really nice one here. Uh, Perry Company, Nashville. This is what I love. I love these sorts of things. Let's see if we can't get the back off there. Again, just needs a new eraser. Looks pretty serviceable to me. Rather nice example here. This one's a 57 or better, I'm going to say on this. I sell wooden pencils from Westinghouse for 10 or 15 bucks. So... Multiply that times three or four for something like this in most cases. Now here's uh, Bowman uh, Products, uh, Cleveland, Ohio. Automotive parts, there we go. This is another early one. Probably very late 40s, more like into the early 50s would be my guess. Uh, really nice example. Also, does still work as you can see. Uh, hopefully you can see the lead. Uh, nice example here. Again, something like this because it's a regional tie-in. Um, it also has Oakland, California. I just saw that. Look at the code on it for their zip. It's just a three for Cleveland, a one for California. Rather interesting earlier piece. This is an interesting one. Farrell Benjamin uh, Memphis Tire Engineers. Now, this is for recapping. If you don't know what that is, um, semi-truck tires cost a fortune if you didn't know that. Hundreds and hundreds of dollars. And they'll recap it. Once the treads are gone, they'll shave off the surfaces and remount a new tread section. It's much cheaper than a new tire. If you go down the road and you see like a big long strip of tread from a tire, usually it's from a semi. And this has been done for uh, decades and decades and decades. By the looks of this one too, 40s or 50s again. Tire collectibles are very good. Uh, 57, 50, uh, I would probably say on this. Again, these are all name brand pens for the most part. Here's a Goodyear one. You can't go wrong with Goodyear. Nashville again. A lot of these southern ones are harder to come by than some of the northern ones. It still works too. It's got an interesting style to pop up on this thing here too. So I've got a couple of some of these. Goodyear again, 5750. I'll probably shoot on it. And again, I'm not worried about lowballing this. I don't care what somebody else has these up for on this case. I sell pens and pencils like this all the time. I never, ever worry. I just put them up and I forget about them and they sell routinely. I'll probably sell maybe half a dozen, maybe even a dozen of these the first day I list a bunch of them right off the bat just because these are so scarce. Again, these are disposable items. Most people threw these away. Uh, Euclid uh, farming moving equipment and you can see a nice picture of a tractor it looks like on it. This is probably 40s or so by my guess, especially with the uh, ribbing up here on the top. This one, actually, the racer is actually pretty soft. Very surprising. And it works perfectly. Look at that. Uh, I'm one of those crazy people who loves pencils and, and stuff like this. Again, I do artwork, so I've drawn illustrations since I was seven for over 40 years. I have a huge collection. I've got probably a thousand plus uh, pencils in my um, art supplies. Um, that's not counting my, my colored pencils or anything like that. So I love this sort of thing. Y you got to love what you do in my book. Um, and I don't always just do this to make a ton of money. Sometimes I'll run into lots like this that'll be pencils that I will use. I kept a whole bunch of just standard pencils, as I said, drafting pencils and things, just to do artwork with. These are just fine examples here. Uh, let's see if, yep, another nice example there. This is for uh, the Rand shoe. I've got a bunch of shoe ones in here too. Clothing, uh, corsets. Here's some Quaker State ones also. Uh, nice assortment here. So stuff like this, again, I'm 20 bucks a piece. I'll hold out. I, I don't care. Here's some factors. another one of those. Again, I picked up every one I could get for a quarter. So that just gives you an idea here. I can sell these all day long without an issue 
Here's an earlier one here, too. Um, Brown and Bigelow, very well-known company. Look that up if you don't know who Brown and Bigelow is. They've got a huge amount of merchandise that they sold with their name brand marked on it. I've shown some in my videos as well. Uh, something to look for. Here's another interesting one. Here's a Dairy Queen, which is pretty interesting. Portland, Oregon. So this is just something I always look for. I'd also like to give a shout out to one of our friends here, Dom Primetime Treasure Hunter. He sold pencils and he's been uh, well versed in the category as well. So if you want to check out a good channel, why don't you go over to Primetime Treasure Hunter as well and check out Dom. But that's what I have for you today. Well, there you are. Hopefully that gave you some ideas and some thoughts. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button down below. You can also hit that bell icon to be notified if I post new content or go live. Subscribe and tell all your friends. My name is Parker Doodle, and uh, this is my friend, a Dipsy Doodle. He looks terrible, full of skips, smudges, goops. Uh, looks like he was drawn with an ordinary ballpoint. <laughs> I was drawn with a new Parker T-Ball Jotter, only ball pen with stainless steel. Look, the Parker T-Ball now rolls in a stainless steel socket that wears longer, so it writes better longer. Stainless steel gives you a clean, clear line. No smudges, skips, or goops. Writes up to 80,000 words without a refill. <laughs> the Parker T-Ball tip comes in four-point sizes. Be sure your favorite student takes a Parker jotter back to school. Parker guarantees your jotter with stainless steel to write one full year or send in the empty refill, get a new refill free. Still, only $1.98 at your dealer's jotter display. Get the jotter made by Parker now with stainless steel.